Hi friends. For today's patron video, I wanted to make something that would be um, a little bit of a different type of drawing. So we're going to be doing a collection spread that is based on our prompt chocolate. I'm going to make a spread entirely themed around chocolate bars. So that's going to be my collection. And it's going to give me an opportunity to practice lettering, composition, and observation drawing, which I've been a little rusty with, so I think it's a good time to do it. So I hope you'll join me. Try this on your own. I think you can try chocolate too, and I'm going to provide all the images that you need on the Patreon. This will be a fun challenge. I can't wait to see what you do. First thing that you might want to do if you are like big on planning is kind of organize what you want to put on here. So I have a bunch of reference images and I'm going to share those with you on the Patreon so that you can use them if you want to try this on your own. And one of the things I like to do is have variety. So I like to kind of, you know, figure out where everything's going to go so that I have a space designated for everything. So I'm going to put a, um, one of my drawings are going to be right there. I'm going to be drawing um, a Kit Kat package right there, a Hershey's Kiss, put that like right here. And that one kind of needs a little bit of extra room for the little flag, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. This is also really fun for me because I've been trying to give up sugar for my health and just because I'm like addicted to sugar, like sugar is no joke. So I thought I would try to <laughs> try to avoid having so much sugar in my diet. So I'm going to find um, a way to kind of like enjoy candy without actually eating it. Tragic. So I have a Kit Kat, I have a Hershey's Kiss, I have a Snickers. I feel like I kind of just like all chocolate. So I don't have like really chocolate bars that I'm like, oh my God, this is my favorite. No, I don't really have that. They're all my favorite. I'm going to put a Twix over here vertically. So I'm trying to change like the shapes. I want some to go horizontal, some to go vertical so that I have a little bit more variety. So when I say that we're doing a collection, it's because I'm just kind of collecting lots of different images across the spread, all, and they're all gonna be very similar. They're all gonna be kind of like, for the most part, like rectangular shapes. They're all gonna have packaging on them. So this kind of collection is just kind of meant to explore a variety within a similar like theme. I love an Almond Joy, so I'm gonna put an Almond Joy here. So as I'm building this kind of um, spread, I'm trying to think about how I'm gonna use the space and I like to vary my composition at, through size and shape. And I have a little bit of room here, but maybe I won't put anything there. It's kind of small. Oh, you know, I want it to include some text. So maybe I'll move this up a little bit. Kit, cat. And then I wanted to include the word like chocolates, right? Or like chocolate right here. And I just want it kind of like a swooping text box. And maybe I'll put the Kit Kat kind of layered behind it so it has like a little bit of sense of space right here. There we go. And I could really use something here, but I really don't know what could fit in that shape. Maybe, I need something else here, but something small. Maybe I could look up uh, fun sized. I like a Three Musketeer. I'll put a Three Musketeer on there. I'm sure that's good too. And it'll be like a little fun size. I'm just gonna size it to fit in that box. So, I mean, the space is a little awkward. I'm just gonna size it to fit there. So I also have some text, some space here. So maybe I'll add something in there later, but I'm just gonna leave it like this. This is my basic plan. For today's drawing, I'm going to use colors that are appropriate for the packaging. So I'm going to just start going in with my markers. Um, I'm gonna use water-based markers for this. I'm using these Tombow water-based markers. I like because, I mean, I am a sketcher. I don't know why I say I'm not a sketcher because I am. But I don't usually sketch too much with pencil. 
So I'm gonna just go in with my lightest marker. And this is what I'm gonna use to lay in the basic shapes. So I'm gonna start with this Kit Kat wrapper. And even though it's red, I'm going to sketch it in with this yellow marker just to kind of mark where everything would go. Something like this. And it's okay, I'm drawing over this chocolate part, but it doesn't really bother me much. I even like, don't worry too much about like um, things that are overlapping because with this light colored marker, it's gonna really, you know, sit underneath the red of the packaging okay. The only thing I, I tend to kind of like think about um, is light colors. Like for instance, these letters here are white and that is a little bit of a concern because I have to kind of plan where that's gonna go. You can either choose to leave that space empty when it's white, which is my ideal way that I haven't done, but you know, I, in a perfect world, that's what I would do. Um, but sometimes I'm moving too quickly and I just don't plan enough. Or you can use a water base, I mean, an, a, you can use an acrylic marker to define that area later. So that's what I'm gonna do because I didn't really plan accordingly. There's a little, a little packaging. I don't know what that is, like a little fine print area there. So I like to start with my basic shape. So let me do, go ahead and do all of that. And um, then I'll come back to you when we're done with that. sketch in. I have everything sketched out. I have a general idea of where everything's going to go. I'm going to start to use my markers to kind of lay everything in. So um, I'm going to need this red. I'm doing that. I'm going to do the Kit Kat one with you and then I'll do the other ones and I'll just show you like a, a time lapse. I'm going to need this red. I'm going to definitely need the same one that I kind of started sketching with. Possibly this one. Maybe not, but... I mean, I'm looking at the packaging and you can see the colors. Oh, I'll need some brown, something, something chocolatey, okay? So I'm just gonna use those and um, let me show you how I'm gonna build it. So again, I always like to start light to dark. I know I have talked about this before and um, I know, and I have lots of videos where I talk about this process that I use. But essentially, I start with the lightest color and then I layer on top so that I can create the alternate colors that I want. Now, I am using a reference image, so I'm drawing from observation. So I'm just essentially gonna like try my best to get the image in the way that I want it. Um, just because you draw from observation doesn't necessarily mean that you need it to be exactly like realistic. In fact, I think like the best way to do this, I, in my opinion, is to find like a perfect balance between copying directly and, you know, infusing it with your own kind of, you know, flair, your own kind of style. I forgot that here's the little, the little exclamation point. So I kind of went over it. I'm going to, I'm going to stop a little bit short there. And I like to use these markers because it's really fast and easy to lay in my color. So essentially all of this is red and there's a little bit of a lighter red there. There is a little box here for the calorie information, but let me lay that in first. And then there is like a little bit of a shadow here. So 
I can treat that in a couple of different ways if I want to include it, which I think I'll, I'll do a little bit of that. So it's a little bit of like darkness here and then it gets a little bit lighter there. So feel free. I think I'm going to use something like a pink because I just look at the color and it looks kind of like pink. So I'm just going to put a pink in there. Um, and it might seem kind of odd to put that in at the beginning, but I think that, um, you know, value is contextual, which means that you need to see the full picture for it to kind of like come together for you. So I'm gonna take a minute actually and just add some of this light value wherever I see those lights. I'm not going to put all of this tiny little text that's in there. So I'm gonna focus on this shape of that little ring first just to kind of get that shape in there correctly. Um, these little chocolate bars overlap, so they're gonna sit in front of that, so I can do that later. Let's go ahead and do the letters. I'm gonna go around the letters and around this ring. And again, not super important that it be perfect, like exactly like the wrapper. Why would I wanna do it exactly like the wrapper? Because then I could just look at the wrapper. I think these are best when, when they're a little bit wonky, I don't know. There's a lot of illustrators that I follow that I love how their work has like a really like simplistic, playful quality to it. Um, and that's what I, I'm always trying to achieve in my drawings. I'm focusing a lot on the negative spaces, which are the empty spaces around the letters. And for me, this is gonna help because the, the letters are white I really want to leave that area as light as possible. I already went a little darker than I would have liked to, but I'm just going to look at the empty space and try to draw those shapes in right here. Again, perfection is not the goal here. I just kind of like fun, playful lettering. Put a little bit there. There's not a lot of space here, but I'm going to add that in there to define the K right here. So this is pretty much negative right here. And then it touches the next K. And there's actually a lot of space up here above the K on this side, but I didn't plan for that. So there we are. That's what we have. So I feel like though, even though there's like some little you know, errors, I guess, so to speak. Um, it's still gonna read like, oh, that's a Kit Kat. I mean, if you're familiar with the packaging, you'll probably recognize it. So that's all I'm going for here. I'd like it to be recognizable. And then beyond that, I'd like it to be a little playful. Those little chocolate bars get in the way here. It actually does become a little bit complicated in this area here. So my recommendation is just take your time. So I'm gonna leave it kind of like that. I see some empty space here. You guys, my video stopped in the middle of that drawing. I don't know how far I got, but let me just continue it here. So now that I have this part already kind of sketched in, Again, I'm still looking at my reference photos and the same thing goes, let me look at the brown. So, you know, a swatch area is helpful. Something a little bit light and then a little bit dark. So I'm gonna use this one right here for the general chocolate bar area. So something like this. And there's a little bit of chocolate, like a triangle of chocolate there and a triangle of chocolate here. This side does crop off on the edge, so it cuts it cuts off on the edge of the wrapper. Jaggedy lines of chocolate in here. Let that be a little irregular. And here it says king size. I'm gonna just write that on. I'm not gonna do this too special. It's just gonna look a little uh, informal there. Okay, so I have the basic shape. I also have this word chocolate that's kind of interfering with things. Um, so I might add that in. 
and I think I, sh I think it should be brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there now so that that way I have a good placement for it. And I have had some requests to talk a little bit more about lettering, which of course I am so happy to do because I love lettering. So um, I'm gonna do a whole like video about lettering for you guys. Um, but I want to give, I'll give you kind of like a basic structure. What I do for my lettering is, um, I sketch out all the letters and I like to put a line at the top where the top of the letters will touch and a line at the bottom, especially if I want something kind of wavy like this, I'll create two guidelines. I'll, it's also helpful sometimes if you're just beginning to put a guideline down the middle. So you kind of know where the centers of your letters are. So you could line up like this line with this line and this line, but I didn't do that here. Um, now I also like to add serifs because I am a serif kind of girl. Um, I'll put little lines on the bottoms of my letters and some, I mean, sometimes I get the serifs wrong in the wrong direction, but generally, I mean, I do this so much that I'm, I'm pretty sure this is, the, these are the right serifs. And honestly, like what is a right serif and what's a wrong serif? I don't know. But my lettering is based on like a traditional serif font like Times New Roman or something like that. So this is generally where your serifs go. And then I like to make them a little bit like, how would I say this? Like I like to round the corners. So let me show you what I do for that. So um, I'll take this one as an example because it's right in the middle. So here's my serif, right? You can see that it's got, I mean, it's not like a 90 degree angle there, but it's, you know, a pretty hard angle. I just like to put a little corner of, I like to fill that corner with a curved stroke to make that just a little bit more um, bohemian, but like wannabe formal. I don't know, I don't know how to describe what I think of it, but I like that that look for a serif. So I always add those little, that little corner. I fill the corners with a rounded kind of shape. So you can see that I'm just adding that in wherever I see them. Sometimes it works better than others. Like right there, it doesn't really work very well. You can see that the O's also don't have any serifs and these H's, I mean, I try to leave a little bit of space between my letters so I have room to do, to do this, but I don't always do it and it gets a little crowded. So I don't mind going over the letters next to it um, so sometimes I'll do that and I'll let them overlap each other. Kind of cut those off right there. And then I put serifs and then sometimes I'll do a little fake calligraphy by making the downstroke a little bit thicker. I don't think I really need too much more. Maybe a little bit of this darker brown here for the shadowy chocolate area like this area is a little bit darker one thing i want to do right now kind of erase it right here and it kind of gives you a little bit of a finality to it it feels like oh okay i'm i'm done with that area this is probably why i don't like using pencils to sketch because i don't have, i don't want to go back and do that okay i'm going to go ahead and work on the other ones and i'll show you when it's done
artwork is in, I'm going to use my favorite color pencil, which is right over here, to put in a little bit of detail work. So I'll add some lines here and there. I'm thinking about unifying all my objects. So if I do some on this object, it's going to be important that I add it to at least a little bit to the other objects. So if you decide that you want to do this for the lettering, then maybe um, do the lettering on all of the objects. Or if you want to do it for the outlines, and maybe outline all the objects um, so that that way you have some consistency in the way that you organize your line work as well because it's a visual element just like anything else and um, when we're thinking about the visual elements that we add to our works we want to make sure that we are using them in a way that helps to bring everything together rather than make something look like it doesn't belong there with everything else here i'm going to add my favorite i'm also going to use this to create like another line around this to tie in this lettering with this one. It's important that we connect these two visually so that the viewer connects them as well. So I'm gonna continue adding some of this in here and I'll share it with you when I'm done. will try this because it was a great way for me to get back into observation drawing in a way that was like loose and uh, low pressure always key low pressure um don't you know put too much pressure on yourself to make these perfect i think that the best part of these is the quirky informal quality of them so i hope you'll have fun with them play with um composition play with observation drawing and play with lettering. I think you'll have a blast. Let me know how it goes and don't forget to tag me so I can see what you do. I can't wait to see your amazing drawings. Until next time, bye guys.